Hi, I'm Lisa Volte. I'm the eldest daughter of Max and Pauline Volte. I was raised in the Redlands and I started dancing here at the age of seven years old. Thanks to the Redlands Museum, this lovely exhibition is based on my dancing career with the Australian Ballet and dancing around the world. I hope you will enjoy it. I started school at Stradbroke Island and I was really yearning to, to learn ballet. I'd seen, seen photos of Margot Fontaine and she was so gracious and I wanted to learn dancing like her. And When my family moved to Cleveland and mum and dad built a, a home there, I started dancing at the local Lutheran church and, and loved it. I immediately wanted to become a dancer. And so my, my family, uh, mum looked around for a school that would give me more opportunities and found Caprice Dancing School and my ballet teachers, Margaret, Janice and Sandra all instilled a real love of, of ballet and dance and um, theatricality with me and as well as the ballet technique which is so important they really had the lovely RAD training and, and uh, taught the discipline of the, of the ballet technique. This is a little bit of inspiration that got me through the days at the Australian Ballet School. I had a class with Kathleen Gorham who was one of the Australia's first ballerinas and I think I was about 14 or 15 at the time. She said, my love, dear Lisa, I think that one day you shall be a big star, Kathleen Gorham OBE. When you're a young person learning ballet, it's that sort of moment that you, you take with you and it gives you the dreams for your future. And, and I, I really, I did, I did believe her and, and she is part of my little story that made it, made it so did special. She follow you? This one's so special to me. When I when I started at the Australian Ballet School, it was quite nerve-wracking to say goodbye to your mother and be quite homesick. And and my mum wrote some all these sayings. You know, when things don't seem to go right, don't panic, don't get uptight, sit down, reason out the problem. And then there was another little one. If you want to ring and have a talk, we'll do so but don't dwell on your problems. Often the best way to sit down and, and write a letter to us all. <laughs> this was a highlight. This was a highlight, dancing at Sleep, Sleeping Beauty at Covent Garden. Having the opportunity of a, a really big classical work. It's one of the great classical ballets. And, and so for the bicentennial celebrations of Australia's history, we were invited to dance as a company in London and I, I was only quite young and still a quarter ballet corifé dancer and, um, but I had the opportunity to dance on the matinee of, of the season in London which was, was quite an extraordinary experience, very nerve wracking and, and at the time the pressure was just huge to you know, overcome your nerves and, and to burst out on stage and just share your love of dance with, with the English public was, yeah, it was, it was special. And a few nights before, as a company, I was a, dancing a soloist role, so I was in amongst it and we performed for the Queen and that was a big celebration to have a gala for the Queen and the theater was all decorated with wattle and there was you know, so much that was special about this occasion. We'd, you know, it was taking the Australian Ballet to London, showing, showing the art that we did so well. And, and we'd just come from dancing in Russia as well. We'd done three weeks in Russia. We'd danced in St. Petersburg and Moscow and Odessa in Ukraine. And that was a really wonderful, wonderful moment to be back dancing in these great opera houses. And, you know, particularly to dance Romeo and Juliet and have the magnificence of such a wonderful ballet and to be a part of the Australian Ballet on Tour was always a highlight, you know, to be actual, actually able to take our company to the world and to show what we did was a really, uh, a lot of fun, but, but really, really, really very special. And yeah, I have this story, we were taking Capalia to, to the big, you know, special night for Princess Diana, but before we were in, in Nervi in Italy and, and I don't know why, but I got really very nervous. I got the wobbles. And, and so when I came to dance, dance it in London, I think my friends, my fellow dancers were a bit worried for me and they all got together and prayed and they, they prayed for me and took a Polaroid. And so I took this little Polaroid on stage and at the end of the night, we were all introduced one by one to 
Princess Diana and she asked me what was in the prayer book and it was it was funny I opened it up and showed her and we had a bit of a giggle about about this this prayer book and this photo and and that picture ended up being on the front page of the London Times the next day. Yeah. This is one of the great Australian works. It's Anne Woolham's Swan Lake. And it's the costuming is just so beautiful. Me, Swan Lake, you know, there's, it's such a challenge. It's, it's the technical finesse, especially of going into the actuary and the different role play. So for me, this was a real ballet that did grow, it grew a lot with me through my career and I first danced it in 1990 and and then each year after that it was you know wonderful to to revisit and and with the different partners and in 1998 I think it was I was invited to dance Swan Lake uh, in Denmark at the the Royal Danish Theatre and and it was a different production again to this beautiful Anne Williams I danced with a lovely French dancer. He and I worked and we worked on the choreography from Peter Martins and again it was just a beautiful swan lake that that you became Odette and and then took on the alter ego role of Odile afterwards which was you know just lovely. Of doing the two ways of ending I think I preferred to do the tragic ending it sort of somehow you know coming together in heaven was more beautiful to me yeah yeah. When you dance with the Australian Ballet, part of um, your lifestyle is touring for around seven months a year. And this was my uh, my little makeup crate that I kept all my makeup in, and uh, and we had another bag that we kept our point shoes in. And uh, and these are, uh, you know, you'd ha you'd have several of these going around. Maybe maybe I'd have about six pairs on the go that you'd rotate. And for a ballet like Don Quixote, you'd maybe go through maybe three pairs in a night, you'd start off in one pair, a softer pair, and then as you progress, so that for third act, you had a harder pair on for the really, um, the big grand par and the, and the pirouettes and the foites. But uh, Giselle's a ballet that I think, you know, every dancer wishes to have the chance to, to dance. And it was through my career, right from the beginning, even in the school, we learnt it as um, training for repertoire. We learnt it for, for um, dancing the willies and learning to dance in lines. And, and so just gradually I progressed with Giselle. So it's been a big part of my life. And you know, these first performances with Campbell McKenzie were just so special. We'd had time to really work together. And when we danced together, we had a lovely synergy. And and I think it was, you know, when you have that beautiful beginning and in a role, it just lends itself. So each time afterwards when I had, you know, many different partners, I danced it with Robert Marshall, Damien Welsh. And each time, you know, coming back to that role, you'd grow a bit or you'd change because the people you were dancing with interpreted it differently and you'd work on it together and then you know, you'd make your own individual interpretation and then you'd take that together on stage. And uh, it just, it takes you out of your life, I think, ballet, you know, and, and that's what these great classics can do. They can offer people um, something really beautiful to, to hold and a feeling that, that maybe connects with their own lives. This is one of the most beautiful, fun costumes to wear. Don Q is a really big part of Australia's history and um, Nureyev, Rudolf Nureyev did a version of it for the Australian Ballet in the 1970s and it went all over the world and you know many of our greatest dancers have performed Nureyev's Don Q and for me I danced it for the first time in 1993 and I got promoted to principal uh, in the afternoon after doing my first show and um, I just I did the show and afterwards Mayna came back to the dressing room and she said oh, I've just I've been thinking of doing it for a while but I'd just love to promote you today to principal and wow that's just such a dream for any dancer you know to dream and to work hard towards being a ballerina and think that you are able to represent the Australian ballet it, it is my great love and to, to have that that little accolade of, of taking on principal artist uh, this is my last performance before I had my, my daughter Olivia. It was such a happy night, I was so excited about becoming a mum and uh, at that point I never thought I'd dance again but uh, you know a few years later David McAllister invited me back to perform and 
And my daughter was three and so at 38 I went back on the stage and danced one of my favourite roles, La Feet. And uh, she was a, you know, a sylph, she was a, a fairy really, really and it had drama in it and lightness and ethereal qualities. And, and I remember when you were retiring, I was thinking, oh, no more Lisa, so sad. <laughs> and then she came back and she came back and did La Feet and it was, I can still see you on that stage doing that ballet. It was really quite special after all of the years to see at where you were in your life mm. to be performing such an intensive and demanding role mm. on that stage. Dad, my daughter, you know, she watched in the evenings, mum and dad came down and they took her to so many shows and that was really special and we'd get home from a performance at night and, you know, be quite excited by, you know, the, the feelings that you'd captured in the show and the audience and the, you know, partnerships. But my, I'd get home, we brought back to reality. My daughter would say, Mum, I've watched you all night, you were wonderful, but now you can watch me. And we'd sit down to a performance, she'd get my dad, Max, up. I'd been dancing with a lovely partner called Robert Curran and, and Liv would say, Granddad, come and dance with me, Roberto, you're Roberto. We'd watch Liv dancing the same role, but as a three-year-old. <laughs> Yeah, for me, this career has really been the love of my life and uh, I've met so many friends because of this ballet career and, and you know, the Redland Museum and all the, the wonderful talent here, they've, they've given me this opportunity and I'd really love to thank the President, Bruce Smith, um, Tari Young, the events coordinator, Rick Tomasson, who's been the exhibition officer, Doug Alexander, is the treasurer and all the many dedicated volunteers. It's been really a wonderful little trip down memory lane for me, so thank you.